Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and let's get started. So we're going to be solving this radical equation and obviously if you have a radical equation, you can try to eliminate the radical by squaring both sides and then so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and try that first and see what happens. So if I square both sides here in this expression, then I should be getting something like 2 minus the square root of x plus 2 equals x squared, right? Okay, so I squared both sides. Now, of course, you have another radical, so you want to get rid of that as well. So let's go ahead and isolate that radical on the right-hand side. So we get square root of x plus 2 is equal to 2 minus x squared, and now we'll square both sides one more time. And this should give us x plus 2 is equal to the square of x 2 minus x squared, which is a minus b squared, remember, is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Therefore, this will equal 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth power. Okay, we end up getting a quartic equation. And you know, quartic equations have a formula, which is quite complicated. They kind of depend on cubic formulas or cubic equations so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and see what that looks like. x to the fourth minus 4x squared. And then if you go ahead and bring the x over, and then we're going to bring the 2 over, that's going to give us a positive 2, right? So this is going to be our equation. Okay, so this is a quartic equation, and you can look for rational solutions if they exist. Uh, you know that the rational solutions uh, need to be factors of 2, uh, so this is monic, so you're not really expecting anything like a one half or two thirds, but rather you're going to be looking for integers. And you can test it out. And then if one of the integers work, then you can divide by that as a polynomial and then reduce the degree and then keep doing this until you get something you can solve easily, which will probably be a quadratic equation, right? But here's the problem with this approach. I mean, it's, it's not super bad, but I'm just saying that after you find all these answers, you have to make sure that it satisfies the original equation because we squared both sides twice, so that introduced extraneous solutions. Okay, anyways, so this is one path to take, but I'm going to be taking another path. So here is our method. I'm going to go ahead and use substitution here instead of squaring both sides. As you see, squaring both sides eliminates the radical, but it also introduces extraneous solutions that also makes the equation harder to solve. So taking advantage of some sort of symmetry here that we have, I'm going to go ahead and call this expression u. Okay, so now according to my assumption, square root of x plus 2 is named as u, which means x plus 2 can be written as u squared. All right, that's my first thing. Now, second thing, obviously, comes from here, because by naming that radical inside the radical u, then you will get another equation. u will get another equation, which is the square root of 2 minus u is equal to x. Kind of like a chain reaction or, I don't know, whatever you call it, nested square root. We do get another equation from here, and that looks like what? It looks like this. 2 minus u is equal to x squared, because I want to square both sides. And this is fine, but here's one thing to keep in mind. Let's talk about the domain of this function as a function, if you put x on the left-hand side or whatever you want to do here. But let's just talk about what are some possible x values. For example, obviously x plus 2 needs to be greater than or equal to 0, otherwise it's not going to be a real number, right? And then we know that x also needs to be greater than or equal to 0 because it's the uh, square root of something, and, and, last but not least, 2 minus the square root of x plus 2, which is the expression in, inside the radical, also needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So we have to look at it as a system of inequalities, and we have to find the intersection. So how do you find the intersection? Obviously, x is greater than or equal to 0, takes care of that, but now we have to do this one. So let's go ahead and isolate the radical on the right-hand side, and then flip we're going to get this, and you can square both sides. And as you know, here uh, we get x plus 2 is less than or equal to 4, which means x is less than or equal to 2. Now, here's a problem. What happens if x is equal to 2, right? We can actually experiment with that. So if x is equal to 2, go back to the original problem, 
if you replace x with 2, then you get the square root of 4, which is 2, 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So you get something like 0 equals 2. That's not possible, right, as far as I know. So x cannot equal 2, obviously. So x equals 2 is forbidden. Therefore, instead of writing x is less than or equal to 2, we have to write x is less than 2. OK, can x equal 0? Let's explore that. If x is equal to 0, I'm going to plug in 0. I'll get square root of 2. The square root of 2 minus square root of 2 does not equal 0. Again, that's not going to work either. Therefore, x cannot be 0. So this turns into x is greater than 0. So put it all together. You're going to get this condition. So whatever solutions I get from here, and I'll show you in a little bit how to solve this as a system. We're going to solve this really nicely. There's a really cool method to manipulate this. But we have to make sure that those solutions satisfy this inequality. That's our final inequality, which says that x is between 0 and 2. OK, now, in order to be able to solve this, what I'd like to do is I'm going to take this equation and this equation. And of course, I'll always keep this inequality in mind. I'll have to consider that at the end. But let's go ahead and solve this system. How do you solve this system? Well, I see u squared. I see x squared. And I can just go ahead and subtract them, right? Why not? I mean, it's just experimenting. So I'll get u squared minus x squared if I subtract this way, right? And then on the left-hand side, I should be subtracting x plus 2 minus the quantity 2 minus u, right? OK, cool. Now, this is going to give us something interesting. But always remember that our x values need to be between 0 and 2, not inclusive. OK, so. One thing we can do here is simplify the right hand side and the two cancels out. We end up with x plus u. Cool. Now, notice that the left hand side is factorable, right? So let's go ahead and factor it. We can write it as u plus x times u minus x because this is a difference of two squares. And on the right hand side, I have x plus u, but let's write it as u plus x so it looks better. And it also looks like the left hand side. So what do you notice? OK, don't be tempted to cancel out the u plus x, because if you cancel out, you divide by something, especially if that thing contains variables like x or u, then you're losing some solutions. So you got to be very careful here not to simplify. All right. Don't fall into that trap. What we should do rather is put everything on the same side and factor. That's what we should do. OK, that's the safe route. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract this u plus x as a quantity. So I'll keep that in parentheses and set the whole thing equal to 0. Beautiful. Now, I have u plus x, right? u plus x is a common factor, obviously. So what I can do is I can just go ahead and factor the u plus x out. And if I do, then I should be getting something like this. u minus x. Notice that we have u plus x on the outside, and this is considered 1 times u plus x. Therefore, it's u minus x minus 1. OK? Did this make sense? Hopefully it did. Now we're going to set this equal to 0. All righty? Cool. Now, what is next? Well, the next step is going to be setting each factor equal to 0 from zero product property, and then try to solve from there. But remember, u is something that we used to substitute, right? So what is u equal to? Well, if you go back, you're going to notice that u is equal to the square root of x plus 2. So we also got to remember that when we are solving this equation, all right? So u is equal to square root of x plus 2. So I'm going to start with the first one. I can just go ahead and replace this one with 0. So u plus x will be 0 but u is equal to the square root of x plus 2. So this gives me the square root of x plus 2 plus x is equal to 0. Again, this equation is a radical, but we can solve it because it's going to turn into a quadratic. Let's isolate the radical, and that's going to give us negative x. All right, OK. Here you have to be careful because you're going to square both sides, but notice that negative x cannot be negative, right? Which means that x needs to be less than or equal to 0. But what was our condition? When we were working with the different inequalities that come from the domain, we said that x needs to be between 0 and 2. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have to be careful 
uh, we have to make sure that we satisfy this inequality at the end. But right now I see that x is less than zero is not an option. So obviously from here, we're not gonna get any solutions, unfortunately. But if you were to solve it, like let me just show you how this equation can be solved. I mean, you can square both sides and you're gonna get this. And then from here, you should get x equals two or x equals negative one because this is an easy quadratic, right? But none of these solutions satisfy this inequality. Therefore, we're gonna reject them, okay? So u plus x doesn't really give us anything. So we're gonna check u minus x minus one. So if u minus x minus one is equal to zero, what is that supposed to mean? And you gotta remember that u is equal to square root of x plus two, right? And x is between zero and two, right? So these two conditions must be satisfied. Okay, now here I can just go ahead and replace u with square root of x plus two minus x minus one is equal to zero. In order to solve this again, we're going to isolate the radical and square both sides. And when we're squaring both sides here, as you know, we're gonna get some extraneous solutions, probably, right? But we gotta check, okay. We have a condition here that is gonna help us. So let's go ahead and square both sides and this should give us x plus two is equal to x squared plus two x plus one. If I put everything on the same side, I should be getting x squared plus x. This is the interesting part because remember, I call this a golden problem. Now you might be asking yourself like, why is this called a golden problem? Well, kind of, we'll see in a little bit. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm gonna bring the x over, so that's gonna give me x, and then I have a minus two, one minus two is equal to negative one, and we get our golden, well, somewhat golden equation. Okay, all right, cool. Now. What are we supposed to do? Solve this, it's a quadratic, so we, we should be able to solve this easily, right? Let me write the equations, uh, solutions separately because you know that we have some conditions that we need to satisfy. So let's make sure that it's satisfied uh, when we wrote the solution separately, it's easier to check. Negative b plus, let's write the plus first, square root of b squared, b squared is one, and then uh, let me, okay, I'll take one more step, one minus, four AC, but that's gonna be plus four, so it's gonna be the square root of five divided by two. So my first solution is gonna be negative one plus root five over two, and yes, you guessed it right, the second solution is just gonna be negative one minus root five over two. Now, you gotta remember that X needs to be between zero and two, and this is a negative quantity, so we're going to go ahead and reject it, so we end up with a single, can you imagine this? Like we had a quartic at the beginning and we ended up with a single root, which is the square root of five minus one over two. Now, why did I call this a golden problem? Because this is not the golden ratio, but it's related to the golden ratio. Okay, if you know what it is, please comment down below and then this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow at the same time with another video. And guess what? It's going to be a geometry puzzle. All right, take care, bye-bye.